Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. I'm Weston Palmer. Let's get started. So this is what we want to end up with for projected month sales. End of the month sales. We've got uh, current year. This happens to be February of 2021. And then we have the previous year sales. And then we want to get this projected sales number. Where do we think we're going to end up? Now this is different than using the forecasting uh, option that Tableau gives you. I'm going to show you there's three components that we're going to need to add. I'm going to tell you up front this is a long video, so sit back and enjoy the ride. First, we have the month, the daily sales. This happens, the client actually had a lot more products, but I'm just rolling it up to total sales for the day, just for the ease of what we're doing here. I've got January and February, but you'll notice that February ends on the 10th, February 10th. So we're trying to understand what happens the rest of the, the month. Now I'm going to skip to this daily percentage. The client had already identified approximately how many, how much uh, sales should be happening on any given day. And so if you were to look at this, total this up, this is February 2021. Come down here and it is going to total 100%. So that's going to be key. We're going to use this to determine how far or how many sales we should have at the end of the month, depending on how much sales they have thus far through the month. Just bear with me. And then finally, we have this kind of a, it's a helper table. We're just putting in the end of the month date and then a placeholder value. This is going to be important because when we're trying to plot all this data on one chart, uh, because the main sales doesn't go through, go to the end of the month, we want to show we need a data point for that. All right, now let's get into Tableau. So I've already connected to the file. And what we wanted to have is the main table is uh, main sales. Okay, we're bringing that over. Now this is in 20, I think 20, 2020.3. And what you can't do, you cannot just pull over uh, the daily percentage like you normally would this way because it doesn't quite work the way we want it to. So what we're going to need to do uh, is remove that. If you double click this, this will get you to the old style uh, joining format. And I'm going to bring daily percentage over here and I'm going to join that on... Uh, left join, we're going to join on sales date. Okay, close that. Now what we need to do is we're going to bring end of month over and rather than doing a left join, which is typical, we're going to do a full outer join. That way we're going to get, let's see here, main sales and then we want end of month. That way we get that last day of the month. Right now, I've done this a lot of um, work that's been done ahead of time, and so you just have to bear with me on this. Um, that I spent quite a while trying to figure out how to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over the let's see here main sales. I'm going to bring over the date, and we're going to want that to be day. Usually, when we're doing time, I do just uh, continuous but in this case we're going to do filter we're going to filter on just the month we're going to filter on just February although it'll work for other months as well and then we'll bring the date up here to year okay and we're going to bring sales over we're going to just change this real quick help us understand what's going on Okay, so those are the sales, and I, and what we're wanting to do is we want to project a value that's out here. Before we do that, I'm going to grab the percent of month. I want to graph that as well, and I'm going to convert this to a percentage. There's a little bit of this prep work that has to happen ahead of time. And we got percent of month and sales. Actually, we wanted uh, measure names. Grab that under here. That's where we really want it. Not there. 
And what we want to have happen, we're going to, we're going to do graph year to date, I mean month to date. So we're coming down here, do quick table calculation, total, running total. We're going to just make sure we're going to have this compute using table down. Uh, we're going to, let's do, we can leave it as table down. Usually if you have multiple months, you might do pain down. So it resets every month. And so you've got 3767. I'm actually going to pull this over to create a new calculation. I'm going to call that uh, sales month to date. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to project what that is going to be at the end. And so I need to convert this to the rolling or uh, running total as well. And I'm going to just double check that. Table down, okay. And I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to call that percent sales to date, month to date. And make that a, I'm going pretty fast here, I know, but you can, uh, you can rewind it and watch it again. So what I want to do is if you were to take a calculator and let's take 3767 divided by 0.322, that's what we want to have be our expected end of month sales. Okay, we're looking at that 11,699. Calculated field, we'll call this projected month end sales. And so we're going to just take the sales month to date and divide it by the percent. Click OK and bring this over as well and that works. Great. So now what we need to do is we want to get this value, this 11,699, we want that to show up out here. And what we really need to do is you, you can't see, but I'm going to, let's see here, how do we do this? We're going to do a graph date. And this is something I've done before and you may want to do this as well. And say, if, if the end of month date, so is null, no, oh, actually we're going to do date. Then we're going to use end of month else date. So what this is going to do is this is going to give us a, uh, it's not date densification, but we're merging the, this is how we're going to get the end of the month onto the same chart. And I'll show you what I mean here just in a second. So if we were going to just take, we're going to put the date up here and we're going to, uh, we'll expand that out. We've got day. And we wanted to put, we can't filter. There is no data. There's nothing to, we can't assign anything to this data point here because there's nothing there on the main sales. But, come to worksheet, let's clear this. If we bring the graph date up here, let's see here, we'll expand this out. I was just using this for another video. Now what you see is now we have a data point. And now when we have that data point, now we can start assigning values to it. So let's come back here. So we've got the graphed sales. 
now let's let's come we're now going to start putting things together piecing it together so let's put the graph date under the columns we're going to change this to the day and we're going to put the graph date up here we're going to just filter on just to february all right and so we should have one through 28 29 because uh 2020 was a leap year and let's grab and let's put sales let's see how this is going to work month to date that's for both years and so we want to bring the year graph date year all right so we want to get rid of this null i mean we want to get rid of this line here because that's if we're showing this on a graph and trying to show projected sales we want to get rid of that so let's come here i already let's delete this i use it somewhere else but that's okay let's recreate it i actually skipped over that portion of it uh, we'll do let's see graph to sales if the if the main date if, the, if is null date then null else we want the sales month to date and this is where it's going to say hey we can't do that so we're going to put in max here and we're going to change that'll change it to an aggregate And you're thinking, well, hey, wait a minute, that's going to give me the, you know, the 10th clear back here. No, because it's going to be um, calculated at each point, the max of, you know, February 1st is February 1st. The max of February 3rd is February 3rd. So we'll hit OK, and hopefully this will work. So we're going to bring graph to sales, and that worked. Great. We're going to just hide this indicator. So that's stage one. So now what we want to do is we want to bring the projected sales onto this chart. So let's bring projected month end sales. And it's going to give us two data points. And something similar to this, we don't want all these data points. This is because it's reprocessing each time depending on the sales. Uh, you have a different percentage for each day. You know, it's 3% or 4%. And so as you, you know, add those up and divide it, you're going to get a different number until finally the, um, the sales flattens out. The, you know, the running total flattens out. So the way we do this is we're going to call this month end projection I know it gets really confusing they all sound very similar and so I'm going to say if is null and this is going to be the placeholder now then we're going to do projected month end sales else null what this is doing what it's going to do if you remember, the, you probably don't remember, if you go back for placeholder for the end of month, the end of the month had a placeholder value of 1. And so we're saying if there's a placeholder value, it must be the end of the month. And if it's the end of the month, we want that projected month end sales. We want that value. Otherwise, show it as null so that we don't actually see the value. Now, what's happening here is this is a projected, this was an aggregate function, and you can't mix aggregate and non-aggregate functions. And the way we get around that is, once again, we're going to put this under max. Right, The max value at a single point for a single day is we only have one, one value. So that max of that one value is that value. You could use min, you could use average as well. It's some, just you need to put an aggregate in there, an aggregate function. So now let's hit OK and let's put this month in projection on this value here. And we should get just a data point. 
we didn't. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Compute using table across. Um, oh, we've got it backwards. So we want to put, if it is, I was saying if it was null, If there wasn't anything there, then just take what we had. So in this case, we want to say, if it's null, don't put anything. If we have a value, then we want to do something. Let's hit apply. And now you'll see that there is the one data point. And if we hover over it, there's that 11,699. Okay, now it's a simple cleanup. We're going to dual axis. Going to synchronize. And then we've got some other cleanup here. Let's get rid of the, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but what I found, so we want to get rid of the colors. If we get rid of the graph, it goes clear up to 55. So we got to be careful of that. So we have to have the, the graph, uh, the year level of detail. It's not a LOD, not fix or something, but we need to have that detail in there. So we're going to do under details. And now that stays where it belongs. We can get rid of the measure names, change the color, something like this, do a gradient, uh, make the current year a little darker, the, the preceding years a little lighter, so they're same kind of color. Another quick point, you see that it's the dark line is being crossed by the lighter line. Just come up under the legend and just move that down, and that will make it on top of it. You can do that or you can do sorting. Let's make this a little more pronounced. We're going to come here instead of a line, we're going to make this a shape. Come here, going to make this a diamond. You can make it whatever you want actually. Color, I like to use red just to make it stand out. You might want to make it dark blue so it kind of aligns with this. Make it a little bit bigger. And then also I like to add a label, show the mark labels do some formatting there, hide this axis, hide that, and now you have a projected sales chart. Hope that was helpful and interesting. Another way of looking at some problems, like I said, I ran through this real quick, took me uh, several hours to figure this out, I hate to admit that, but uh, tried a lot of different dead ends until I finally came across this methodology. Enjoy. Leave your comments. Love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. Hit subscribe and the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And check out my other videos to learn even more about Tableau.